Hi everyone and welcome along. Now we've painted many snowdrop tutorials over the years but the beauty of watercolour is there are so many options in how you approach painting a single subject. So today we're going to have a look at painting snowdrops on a dark atmospheric background. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay so we're going to begin by marking out in pencil just a, a few stems um, they, they grow in clusters. There we go. And now I'm going to just do a little drop shape from each stem. Just a, they have this extra long sort of lobe at the end of the stem. And then a little cap. And then three petals. Now you can draw them in if you want, or you can just sort of feel confident that you know how they work. But um, I'll draw them in for the sake of the teaching, the filming. They don't all have to be sort of nice and even. They can be a bit random like that. It is nature after all. Might have been buffeted about in the wind, but essentially, you're looking to sort of see three petals. There is another one lurking at the back, but there we go. And we're going to use some masking fluid because that really is the easiest way, especially if you want to paint in some really dark colors and white. So the masking fluid I use is Winsor & Newton art masking fluid. Um, give it a little, little bit of a tilt if you haven't used it for a while. And I'm going to get a separate palette to pop some in. So I'm painting in my masking fluid. I'm, I'm painting over the snowdrop flowers um, and I'm using a brush that I have um, that's sort of on its last legs a bit. And you can get specific masking fluid applicators. You can use a bit of soap on the brush to protect its bristles before using it. There are ways of saving your brushes and not having to sacrifice one every time you want to put some masking fluid on. Um, what I'm also going to do is I've painted in just a few little streaks of masking fluid up the stems and maybe just a little bit on the the loop. I just want to have a few little extra shoots of lightness. So we're going to let that dry 100% and then we'll put our wash on. So this is dried now and I'm going to take a large brush. I've got my size 12 um, Pro Art Connoisseur brush, which is available in my shop. And I'm going to take um, some buff titanium, quite diluted, so lots of water. And I want to start building up a lovely sort of glowing wash and you were like Harriet it's meant to be a dark background well I know but what we're going to do is we're going to build it because that's what happens with watercolour um, so I'm going to take a little bit of the buff titanium as my, my sort of base and then a just a tiniest bit of cadmium yellow just dabbing it in there because of course snowdrops are the first flower of the year aren't they they're that little signal of hope in the darkness. So we've got that little wash going on there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some moon glow, which I think is going to be a really good color. Whilst it's still wet, I'm going to just drag it down. But watch very carefully in terms of the the base level here, the, the, the ground level. We want to create a sense that there's some snow on the ground so I'm going to sort of use the unpainted space to create that so I've got a I've got the ground here and this is all looking nice but what I want to do now is get some Payne's grey in there and really darken it down now I haven't um, I haven't sort of painted every bit of the snowdrop in masking fluid. So there are going to be some bits that are still really dark and that might seem a bit strange, but I like the idea that the, the focus is really going to be 
the the white petals of the snowdrop, the flower, more so than anything else. So that's why I've definitely painted those bits. We've got a few highlights, but ultimately it's going to be all about the flowers standing out. Now that's looking really nice. I'm just cleaning my brush off and I want to just let that sort of settle in a tiny bit. But unlike when we painted the snowy mountain with the skiers on, where it was a very crisp, clear line at the top and, and the, the snow was just completely unpainted space, what I'm going to do now with a size 8 brush and maybe just a little bit of a blue, let's get a just a very tiny bit of cobalt blue deep there. I am just going to just get maybe a little bit of texture in the snow and maybe just a tiny bit of colour just to make it that little bit more realistic but it's hardly anything a very small amount and now we're going to let that dry 100% that's dried now so it's time to start rubbing out the masking fluid so I'm just using my finger there you could use a an eraser but yeah it's a very satisfying part of the painting process and now I've got a size 2 brush and some green gold and I'm going to begin just sort of painting in a snowdrop as usual as if there wasn't a whole load of dark dark shadow there and it's going to result in a really nice sort of interesting amount of light and shade showing up so starting with green gold just going right up the stems right through the areas that have been painted over you don't need to wait long for that to dry um, and now I'm going down a size, I'm going down to a size zero and now I'm taking some sap green and I'm now going to paint with just a little bit more care and detail and start to build up the shape the shading and it's all going to just start to appear in, in little bits whether in, in the shady corners or the bits where it's hitting the light. And now I'm adding a little bit of green gold to the little cap on top of the snowdrop flower. So we're out in the outdoor office these days and um, this is my first experience of it raining whilst I'm painting. I wonder if you can hear the rain. I don't know if you can, <laughs> but it's lovely. It's a lovely sound. Um, now a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow. I'm just going to take and I'm going to just place a sweep of that down, a very diluted on one side of the petals. I've decided to sort of go for the the light coming in from this side so we can just see a little bit of that and maybe actually a little bit on there as well. Okay and now we're going to let this all dry. I'm going to be sort of putting in low lights and things. I can probably place in, so that's just a little bit wet, but a little bit of the sap green in there. And yeah, we just want to bring out the detail in the petals. And we're going to do that with a very, very dilute color. So I've got some little bit of green gold there. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of Payne's Gray 
and just keep on adding until I feel happy with I've got a shadowy colour and then add water to it in my palette and just get it really diluted down to something that I could just pick up a very little bit on the brush and paint in just a few little little streaks there because snowdrops do have a faint texture to them and also it means we can just help define the separate petals like that things we are experience we're in winter in January and that is stormy season over here so we we had up to 100 mile an hour winds in various points in the UK last night it wasn't quite that bad here but we are we are expecting some slightly extreme weather but if you're lucky enough to be all cozy and indoors while there is something very exciting about experiencing the sound of the weather but I hope you're safe wherever you are so I've been able to just add that little bit of texture to all of those and now I want to just finish off by doing a few little tidy ups so a little bit of sap green and lastly a bit of Payne's grey and sap green to make a lovely deep dark green to go back to my uh, snowdrops and add in one last low light and you can just add it wherever you see fit Okay, so I'm really pleased with that. We are going to let that all dry and then we're going to just rub out any last bits of pencil and we'll have our beautiful snowdrops in the snow. And there you have some lovely snowdrops just gleaming out of the dark snowy landscape. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye!